All right, guys, welcome back to the SLC uh, SLC Punks. No, not SLC Punks, the SLC Dunk Podcast. I'm already screwing up. This is your host, Hanson James. I'm here with Calvin Chapel. Calvin, we're uh, now a week away from our last podcast. I'm actually just really proud of us for getting two podcasts two weeks in a row. Feels like I, I was actually writing last week, and I just did the research because I was like, I'm exhausted. And turns out that the Jazz have played more games than anyone. They've played more back to backs than anyone. And so there's a reason why we're tired. <laughs> like we yeah. Just have had to do more than everyone, literally. Anyways, we have a three day, uh, three days off, and it gives us a chance to record the podcast. And so uh, I'm excited to be here. So let's just start it off. Uh, today, uh, they released rookie, the NBA released their rookie rankings, and they had Walker Kessler as the number 10 rookie. Uh, at, in their rookie rankings and so what's your reaction to that yeah i mean it's deserved and honestly you could probably make an argument that he should be higher the only limiting thing for him is minutes a lot of these guys are getting a lot of minutes but uh kessler is just in the unlucky position where he's on a team that starts three players that could reasonably play center and are good players so he it's hard to find more minutes for, for him but he is producing so well in the minutes that he's getting and so it's it's not surprising that he's starting to get some recognition for it yeah he's actually some of his block statistics are pretty remarkable i was looking at it the other day and i'll pull it up here but his blocks his total blocks is up there with some of the best in the league and then his blocks per game is crazy and it's it's not just the blocks i mean he had a play last game where he helped it was rudy gobert-esque it's actually it's actually getting kind of crazy how good he is defensively he is looking like honestly rudy gobert light and but anyways he had a play in the last the last game where it was he came up to contest someone who was driving to the rim which left the weak side open and he was able to then recover and block the shot he he to me he is looking like just an absolute steal for this utah jazz team and i honestly couldn't be more excited i the question i have is at what point can we look at walker kessler as being able to start and like you mentioned the jazz have like three four guys that can play center but like at what point is walker kessler good enough that he at least wins out that position or does something need to change well, I think that just looking at the roster makeup, you'd be, essentially have to replace Vanderbilt in the starting lineup because otherwise you can't really play Vanderbilt and Kessler together because that'll really kill your spacing. Although Vanderbilt is uh, maybe trying to prove me wrong with his three-point shooting. But um, <laughs> Kessler is – he's just a very traditional center where the other three, Vanderbilt, Markinen, and Olenek, are all – ball handling, distributing, scoring, you know, just versatile players who can who can kind of play center. And so it would bring a very different dynamic to the Jazz if they were to do that. To start Kessler, it would change the way that they'd play because right now one of the biggest strengths of the team is having five players that can handle the ball. So anyone who grabs the rebound can immediately run up the court. With Kessler, you wouldn't have that, but he's going to bring his other strengths. Um, you mentioned his... Uh, blocks and that production i thought i should just point it out he's only playing 15 minutes a game almost 16 minutes a game and he's averaging 1.7 blocks per game which is ridiculous that's pretty similar to what rudy gobert generally averages in his seasons throughout utah and you put that you look at his uh per 36 numbers he's putting up 13 points 12 rebounds and almost four blocks per 36 minutes. So it's just his production in his limited minutes is wild. That's, that's what's crazy is he is, he is looking just uh, honestly, it's unbelievable. And I'm, I'm right here on the NBA.com site. He is number eight, just right now, number eight overall in total blocks. He <laughs> has, I mean, that's just in, like you said, 15 minutes a night, he has 39 blocks per game. So he is just absolutely dominating. And then if you look at, so they have it here for totals. If you look at per game, Walker Kessler, number eight, he's per game blocks. 
And then if you do per, so they have it here set as per 48. Uh, his per 48 minutes. Are we doing blocks here? Oh, well, then it goes down. <laughs> but anyways, he's absolutely just dominating. I actually don't think he qualifies with this group. So, but yeah, to be at number eight and be playing 15 minutes per, per night is uh, is just wild. It's absolutely wild. Uh, and so you kind of mentioned it. I mean, he has two players, I think, that really kind of are in front of him that play center. And I think we'd probably both agree it's it's Jared Vanderbilt and Kelly Olynyk that probably just kind of uh, have earned that starting role, at least for now. We saw we've seen some things lately with Jared Vanderbilt that make me think that he might be able to fit with Walker Kessler. And basically it's this corner three point shooting is the corner three for Jared Vanderbilt, something you think that could be for real, or is this more of a fluke and well, could, could Walker Kessler start with Vanderbilt? Well, for Vanderbilt shooting, that's uh, been a big story. Timberwolves fans are rightly mad because <laughs> uh, once he left their team, he started hitting threes. Um, but what's been really impressive about it is that he's getting at least some respectable volume. It's still a low number. He still has, it, he's taking just a, over one three pointer per game, but he's hitting 46% of them. And so that last game he hit four for four against Portland. And, um, if you watch, obviously all of his three pointers are wide open and from the corner, there's, uh, I, I checked this to see, I, I was curious if maybe he'd had one or two that were, were maybe defended a little bit, but no, every single one on and the NBA's website is classified as wide open, which means the nearest defender is six feet or further away from him. So he's not going to take any difficult threes. He's going to get the ball in the corner. And if the defender is not coming out on him, then he'll take the three, but otherwise He's not going to take it, which is smart. That's what that's what you should do as a player who hasn't been a three-point shooter. So really, he's getting practice threes. That, that's what he's getting in the game is just wide open, catch and shoot, corner threes, which is the easiest three-point shot in the game. And he's doing what you should do. He's hitting those. Um, so will he continue to hit 46%? Maybe not. But based on what we're seeing now, it's hard to see it going too far down. It could. It's still a low um sample size um so he could end up at a much lower number but he's not going to be taking any more difficult threes all year he's just going to keep taking those ones so it's not unreasonable to think that he could keep a really good percentage there yeah and i think i mean it is a it is a pretty low sample but i mean he's knocking it down i thought last game was actually a big deal i know it was it was a game where you know, it's just one game, but he went four for four. But what I thought was a big deal is Nurkic was trying to embarrass him or trying to like get in his head and was like kind of demonstrably not guarding him. And he knocked down each one. And I actually felt like that's like a turning point for a player. Like it, it like Vanderbilt right now can just say, hey, you're not going to guard me. I'm going to knock this down. And I think everyone else on the team saw that and notices that and says, hey, you know, if he's open, he's going to knock it down. And I think if Vanderbilt can can do that, where he can knock down that corner three, it does change a little bit what the Jazz do offensively because Walker Kessler is obviously a rolling big man and, and is going to provide spacing just by rolling to the rim. But, man, it could actually do a lot for them in terms of improving their defense. Uh, like, right now, the Jazz have the number, I think, well, I can look it up. They have one of the worst defenses in the league, but one of the best offenses in the league. Uh, let me pull this up really fast. Right now, Utah offensive rating. They're the number three offense in the NBA. It's crazy. <laughs> they are, up, you know, Boston's having a historic season. Phoenix is up there offensively. They have an MVP candidate in Devin Booker. You have the beam team, Sacramento Kings, who's just putting up crazy points. But Utah's number three. Number three in the league. And so I don't know if that's actually getting talked enough about enough uh, with just the offense the Jazz is, are producing. And I think part of that is the ability of everyone on the team to handle the ball and kind of create a shot and things like that. But so maybe if you start Walker Kessler, that probably drops just a tiny bit. 
But right now, the Utah Jazz defensive rating, they are number 25 in the league. So they're just kind of lopsided as a team. And I think starting Walker Kessler would change that pretty dramatically, I think. And so I don't know. I think it's some, if the Jazz are trying to win games, that's something to think about. Because if he can hold up for 32 minutes a game, that could drastically change things for this team, I think. Plus, yeah. plus you could like switch out Vanderbilt and and Olinick with Kessler. Like both those guys could play with what with Kessler, and it could. I don't know. I think it's something to think about as the season goes on if they're trying to win more games. Yeah, I think you bring up a good point with the Jazz defense. The the big issue that you can see when you're watching the game is that interior defense. You'll see sometimes it's Olinick, sometimes it's Markinen. It could be you know one of our guards getting picked on and taken into the basket and then the jazz struggle to get that defensive rebound and those are things that walker kessler's presence could really help um he is still a rookie and he does make some rookie mistakes but overall i think the most impressive thing about kessler's game that i've seen is just how how he doesn't look like a rookie all that often Every once in a while, you'll see him jumping at a pump fake and getting caught on a, a silly foul. But most of the time, he's really well in position, disciplined, and just making the smart play on both ends of the court. And so I think that you could really, if you did start Kessler, I think he'd be able to thrive in that. Yeah, I think he'd be really good. And you, it, it, he is a rookie, uh, but I, I don't know. I think that's just kind of a fun storyline. And I wonder if Walker Kessler being this good and Jared Vanderbilt um, being able to knock that shot down, if that does kind of give the Jazz kind of a, a green light to maybe make some sort of trade even. If they if they don't want to win games, but they want to give Walker Kessler time as a starting center to get kind of acclimated, that might be something that they think about as well. I don't know. Because Kelly Olenek is someone that there might be some teams out there that might be willing to go after him. Um, let's see. The other news item this week jordan clarkson got fined today for throwing his headband into the crowd <laughs> after tony brothers i mean if you guys haven't seen it the play where jordan clarkson drives to the rim he gets knocked mid-air and he lands on his back and tony brothers doesn't call a foul will hardy gets just rightfully infuriated after the game he said he should have gotten two technicals he should have got thrown out how bad the no call was and so they call a technical on Will Hardy. The Jazz lose the game, which was a close one, by the way. And you could argue that was a five-point swing because the Jazz get lose the two points that they would have gotten had Clarkson gone to the free throw line, at least one or two, one point. And then the point for Will Hardy getting his technical foul. And so I don't know. I don't know if there's really anything other to say other than that um, Tony Brothers sucks. And I don't think he should be an official in the NBA. He's just not good. And he's also, by the way, Tony Brothers has also had to serve one, uh, a one-game suspension this year for calling a, a player an MFer or something like that after they had complained about a call. So I just don't know if there's really a place for at this point for Tony Brothers, who everyone knows he's bad. Is there anyone out there who's like a tony brothers apologists <laughs> i don't know uh but i i don't know did you have anything to add to that well i think the the fun part of the story is what we've all seen on twitter is jazz owner ryan smith vowing to cover the fines for both will hardy's technical and uh jordan clarkson's <laughs> fine from the nba um which is cool to see the uh the owner who's that's where you see that he's a fan first and then an owner. Um, and he's uh, doing what all of us would probably do with that kind of money and covering our team's fines. Um, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but correct me if I'm wrong. I think this may not be the first time that Jordan Clarkson has been fined for throwing his headband into the stands. I feel like I remember that happening before. I need to look that up. But um, it's just funny to me that that's such a – a hefty fine with a, I mean, yeah, throwing stuff into the fans, but it's not something that could possibly injure someone. So I don't know. It feels a little, <laughs> feels a little heavy of a punishment for 
how light the crime is, but I don't know. I don't make the rules. Well, there's there's a guy on Twitter's name's Laird Doman. He's really great. Shout out to Laird Doman. He's like a t- season ticket holder, and he's like close to the Jazz bench. And he'll like during the game take videos of like how the Jazz are reacting on the bench and things like that. And but I guess the Jordan Clarkson's headband went to someone just right in front of him, and I they were pretty excited. So I don't know if it was all that dangerous of a thing. More someone got a cool souvenir. <laughs> Right. I mean, honestly, you got it. I yeah, I I won't even get into the fact that that thing might be worth like a thousand dollars if you put it on eBay or whatever. But like, uh, that that uh, I I just I'm not a big fan of Tony Brothers. I don't know why, and I know there's the 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 referees. I don't know if it's the referees union or the players union or whatever it is, kind of protects these referees. But there's just there's just no real reason why Tony Brothers should be officiating games anymore. He's just he needs to retire. He's not a good official. That play hurt like that play can create fights later in the game if players are frustrated and they're not getting foul calls and something like that happens. That can create even more chaos in a game and then refs like Tony Brothers will then go out and make like makeup calls and it just like ruins the game. And so I just I just wish we could just move on from Tony Brothers. I wish he was not officiating games anymore. There's no there's no evidence that he's any good. I it's it honestly hurts the integrity of the game a little bit. So I don't know. I guess that's all I'll say about that. But uh, some other interesting news happened this week is uh, the Jazz are apparently looking to do a rebrand. And according to Andy Larson for like the 24, 25 season and at the last game. So a lot of things happened this game. Jordan Clarkson got, got just clobbered and Tony brothers uh, didn't call foul. And then the jazz were like going around the arena asking fans to, to give their insight into the rebrand. And I've heard from like multiple people that took the thing. Uh, Laird Doman, who we already mentioned, he went out and took the, took the Qualtrics um Qualtrics by the way is the company that Ryan Smith owns where he's kind of made his fortune and and there is a company that does like surveys and and polling and gets public opinion on things for companies and anyways they were doing that with fans and Laird kind of explained what he saw which sounds like a lot of kind of mountain type designs uh with some color schemes it sounds like they're looking at two major primary colors if if he's right but one being black being the primary or one being purple and then a lot of the similar colors they have now with like uh white black purple yellow and then possibly gray as well i don't know what were your reactions to hearing about that i personally was pretty happy about it well i'm happy that they're uh listening to the fan base and trying to based on andy larson's article it sounds like before the current rebrand the jazz had looked at doing just very small focus group tests with the with the rebrand and now they're trying to get a little bit of a wider audience um and so that's good to hear that they they do hear us and i assume i don't know but i assume that that means the sales are showing that the new rebrand is not as popular as they'd hoped it would be. And I wish I could see the mock-ups that they, that they were pulling fans on. So it's hard to say, but I'm excited with the idea of more mountains. I think everybody likes that or most everybody likes the mountain design and really what's missing with the current jerseys is just any sort of personality Mm -hmm. there. They went for Uber minimalist and minimalist can be good. I'm not, I'm not against that. I just think they took it a little too far with the, you know, the font being just as nondescript as possible and really big. And there's just not really any sort of design anywhere. It's just two colors, big letters and nothing else. And so I think putting something on there to give it a little bit of personality, a little bit of Utah or a little bit of jazz would be great. Um, what I'm really hoping doesn't happen, based on what you you had put together on SLC Dunk, 
some of the quotes from people who had that poll, it sounded to me like sometimes they're mixing the purple and the yellow on the same jersey with mm. just black and white. And I worry about that because <laughs> purple and yellow is the Lakers colors. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Jazz have had purple and yellow, but they always have had green with that. And that changes it a lot because when you have purple and yellow, it looks like Lakers. You have purple and yellow and green and it looks like Mardi Gras. And so mm. there's a there's a big difference there. And so just having purple and yellow with neutrals, I worry that we just look like the Lakers and nobody wants that. So that I hope that they don't do that. But I think they could go either way. They could go with purple, they could go with yellow, or they could go with something else altogether. As long as they just, you know, put together a nice brand that way, it'd be great. I just don't want it to be purple and yellow, please. <laughs> Well, I think we're going to get something like that because, well, here's what I think is probably going to happen. I think they are going to kind of follow those color schemes that we saw. I, you know, I just kind of think, I don't, I don't know if I've really even formulated an opinion on this, but while you were talking, I was thinking that I do kind of like the idea of the mountains being kind of, or at least the original logo, the jazz note, at mm. least that original jazz word mark logo with the note for the J being one of them, or at least having the mountains something like that because you were right like i actually i actually like the colors i think the black and yellow looks nice i like i call the black and yellow jerseys the cobra kais that's what they look like to me but they they i like the colors i actually don't mind the yellow it's like a different yellow than like because the lakers yellow is almost like a goldish right and this is a yellow that's more you know everyone calls it highlighter yellow which I personally, I gets on my nerves a little bit because it's not really, I don't know. <laughs> I actually like the yellow. It really pops. And I think it looks really nice with that black. But like you said, there's just not really personality with it at all. It's, it just said, it's just like, it reminds me of the office where it's like, it is your birthday. That's kind of what it like reminds me of. <laughs> <laughs> there's no like anything. That's a perfect description. <laughs> <laughs> like it's really, this is your Jersey. But like, it's like, whether it's the note or the, I kind of like the idea of it being the mountain logo, maybe like a simplified version of that with the jazz kind of that the nineties purple uniform is, I think it sounds like that's kind of what they're going for. Maybe like a simplified version of that. Um, but then what can be really fun is like every year you have new accent jerseys. So you could do something fun with like notes and music in one, you could do one that's like, uh, a re-release of like the Pete Maravich jersey and stuff like that. Like you could do a stars jersey. That would be really fun to have that be like, but they've got to get the core jersey right. Whether it's purple, black, you know, white, which kind of, I, I assume that's kind of what we're going to get. And then like an accent jersey, they've got to get it right. And, but you're, you're not a fan of a purple with yellow trim. It sounds like. No, I just don't want us to look like the Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> but That's why maybe the black primary might be the best. I don't know. I think that black is just, I think black is great for a primary color. I just think you have to have a little bit more than what we have with just everything else being completely plain. I think you've got to have something else that is, you know, recognizable as utah jazz because you know every other team in the league you see something written in their font and you're like oh that's a cavaliers font or that's a lakers font whatever it is but you see something written in the jazz font and you would never know it, it's just a plain boring font and mm -hmm. that's not the only thing it's not just the font but that's just an example of how there's nothing really unique to utah or unique to jazz on the jerseys and so it's just kind of taken a basic minimalist design and just put our name on it and, and called that the jazz Jersey. But I think the one thing that I I'll say positive about it is I think that the merch that comes with it is great. I think all of the, well, maybe not all, but a lot of the shirts and sweaters and hats in the jazz team store look great with, you know, black or white, even sometimes the yellow, um, with just a simple J note logo or a, another alternate logo. I think those look really good because you want minimalist for clothing that you'll wear around. You just don't necessarily want it for the Jersey on the court. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned, yeah, like some of the things they've gotten right, like those, 
the thing they also got right was the court like the black note court is super cool and i i kind of it would be a, that is the one thing that if we they change it and they lose that court i would be bummed because i it's one of my favorite courts ever it is a just perfect basketball court it is like every element of it is so cool and it's just interesting to me that the court i don't know so I, it kind of makes me go like ah, maybe this black primary color i don't know black is i guess you know we can i guess we've rehashed this but i don't care i want to just say what i think like there's really like two ways they can go because there's two real themes the jazz have it's the note or the mountains and i just have always kind of felt when they were we found out they were rebranding it's like well you kind of have to choose maybe you have to choose one and maybe you don't have to maybe they can kind of create a simplified version of the mountains with the note somehow and they somehow can combine those together but yeah they they just yeah the nothing just didn't work and i, I hope they I, I i guess i'm losing my train of thought here it sounds like they are trying and everyone who saw those mock-ups uh my i actually was at work today and my boss's his wife took the test and she said they looked good and so we have multiple people that have said they looked good. They liked it. And so that's kind of a, a nice thing to hear. <laughs> yeah. The initial reaction when we, the initial reaction when we first saw that, remember the leaked thumbnail we saw, it was just a thumbnail of like a, and we were like, there's no way that's gotta yeah. be like, <laughs> Nope, that was it. <laughs> So I I think what we can be excited about is the initial reactions is that they're better um, and that people liked it. I'm kind of, I wish, I wish, I wish I could see, I could take that test. You know, I want to like, ah, uh, Ryan, if you're listening to this, let <laughs> us put it on the site. Let us, let us, if we have the best fans out there on the SLC Dunk site, these guys deserve to take this test ryan these are like the diehards and so people who are listening to this podcast people who read slc dunk let them take the qualtrics survey ryan let us do it it'll be it'll be worth it. although then everyone will see it and everyone will know so maybe they don't want it. <laughs> but we could get a very good sample it would be actually you know what just thinking about that i mean it might be kind of fun to just let the jazz completely crowd not crowdfund, but like crowdsource. Crowdsource the the uniform design, and they just say this is what we want, and then it's like, I mean, it's America. We like democracy, right? Like, <laughs> isn't that? <laughs> this isn't like party system. This is jerseys, and so I think, and it's interesting. You go to the SLC Dunk site. It's right now. So we set up a poll on the site. If you haven't gone already, I haven't set it up. It's like for two weeks. I don't mostly because i didn't really care when it ended but um when you pull it up uh right now the, there's two options there's the black primary the purple primary so there's two options that laird said he saw you can go there and vote right now oh i guess i have to which should i vote for black primary or purple primary i think purple primary might be i kind of like the black i'm going black i don't care Oh, well, I lost. Uh, 71% of voters have voted for the purple primary and 29% black primary with white. So black primary with white, gray, purple, yellow. So white's actually the secondary color with that. That's kind of interesting. And then 71% like the, pri the purple primary with black, white, yellow. So Ryan, it sounds like purple's it. Ryan. Yeah, don't listen to them. I voted black too. That would be better. <laughs> <laughs> you liked the black as well. No, so here's There's my a... here's my opinion. I was when we were all speculating about the rebrand, I thought the Jazz had already set up themselves perfectly with the city jerseys from the last few years. First with the gradient ones and then with the dark mode that had the gradient on the top and the bottom. They were huge sellers in the store. They were the top sellers for like three straight years. And they looked good. They had a court that looked good. Uh, actually, two different courts. And I thought it was going to be perfect because we knew that Ryan Smith liked a black primary. He'd been hinting at it. 
So I thought they could go with a dark mode or something similar to it with the Red Rock theme around it. It didn't have to be the same jerseys, but they had this perfect theme that they could go with that fit Utah with the Red Rock. And so I, I've been think, I had been talking myself into a black primary jersey for a while, and I think that they can be really good if you've got some good accent colors, a good design with it. It can, it can be a really great looking jersey. So. I voted with black and yellow we'll see. with purple and yellow trim, right? No, just uh, not my top <laughs> choice, but <laughs> I actually I think it'd be better. So the thing I actually what when they were initially doing the rebrand, I did think like it kind of dawned on me that black and white kind of makes sense for jazz because like sheet music. Exactly. I was like, oh, if you you could have like a note design that could be really cool if you do something cool and and. I don't know. So I don't know if we'll see if like they go with the mountain. Uh, this is all obviously speculation, but um, it does sound like they're doing a better job of kind of listening to a wider base, which may get them a better just overall rebrand. Um, one last thing we wanted to talk about. So we could talk for days and every single game, it feels like the jazz outlook could change based off of whether they win or lose. And they're scuffling a little bit. Like they, they've won two. I think they've lost their last two. I can't remember exactly. But one thing's for sure is the Wolves are really struggling. And Rudy Gobert kicked a guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, Carl Anthony Towns is out with like a knee injury for like six weeks, which may be longer if it's pretty bad. It's not looking good for the Wolves. There is like a world... Actually, I kind of want to go to the standings really quickly. Maybe we can do this fast and just kind of. But if you go to like, oh, I want to do it by the league here. I don't know. They don't have it on here. Let's go to Tankathon. By the way, if you don't go to Tankathon every day like me and just kind of hit Sim Lottery <laughs> at least five times a day. But anyways, right now, Minnesota is sitting at the number 12 pick. I think there's a shot where this pick gets pretty darn interesting for Utah. New York, the New York Knicks, I think are going to start winning more games. I think Minnesota has a chance to be worse than them. Miami is going to start winning more games at some point. They're a better team than what their record is. I think Washington could start winning more games. It's not, we found out today that Brad Beal is going to be missing some games with an injury, but Porzingis is having a really nice season. The Lakers have won eight of their last 10 games. I think they're going to jump the Wolves. And we may even see Chicago figure things out. Uh, there's a world where that Wolves pick gets to like six or seven. And I don't think that's like, uh, I don't think that's like crazy talk. I think there's a legit chance for that. So I don't know what my question is other than uh, what's your, what do you think? Does that sound reasonable that they could get to that level? And how crazy would that be to get better and get that type of pick? I think that the, the T wolves could go either direction. And I think they could go there really fast because they have a lot of talent on their team, even with towns injured, but especially when he's back, they have so much talent that you could see them putting it together, figuring it out and starting to win a lot of games. But there's, also, I mean, they're the Wolves. They find ways to lose. And so um, things have not been good early this season. They've had times, they've had flashes where you could see that maybe they, they could really figure things out. And, you know, everyone's talking like it's a complete disaster season. And they're 11 and 12 right now, which is obviously not good and nowhere near what they want it to be. But with the way that – with how – even the NBA is right now. That's really not as bad as it as uh, people are making it out to be. Um, a lot of like the Western Conference, they're only uh, the Timberwolves are five games back from the top spot, so they're only three games back from number three. You know, it's really not a lot of ground that they'd have to make up if they could figure things out. They could climb up those standings, but. If they don't and and things keep, you know, going downhill, getting more toxic, there's already been a lot of <laughs> drama. If it gets really bad, they can fall very easily because there's really only the Spurs, Rockets, and Thunder that are just 
tanking. And even then the Thunder are 10 and 13. They're not that bad. So they there are a lot of teams that could pass them pretty easily in the West. So I could see it going either way. And they could they could hit some pretty high highs and some pretty low lows. I think their their variance is about as big as anyone in the league. It's it's pretty wild. I mean, yeah, you're right. There is a chance where they just kind of figure things out and maybe Rudy just kind of gets to another level defensively. Maybe he hasn't quite been there yet this season. But man, it is like they they are they've let's see. They have lost their last one. They actually have they're 6 and 4 in their last 10. But man, losing Carl Anthony Towns, they just look discombobulated. It was interesting that report that came out after the last game. They didn't even they weren't allowed to interview the players. Apparently the locker room was just not happy. Um, I think you mentioned it too. Oklahoma City is actually pretty decent. I mean, I know they don't have Chet Holmgren, but they're like a good team. Uh like, well, I don't know if good. They're at least an average team that can, you know, win half their games, you know, for the rest of the season. I honestly think they're they're on a tr- on track to be around seventh or eighth. Unless, you, like you said, unless they really figure it out, uh, I'm just I'm salivating at the idea. Right now, the Jazz have the 12 pick, the 14 pick, and the number 17. Ah, uh, makes me so happy. <laughs> but like, I want to be better. If if that if the Jazz ended today, they'd get Anthony Black, uh, number 12, Derek Whitehead, who has been struggling at Duke. And then Kyle Filipowski. I don't know who that is. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I don't know any of it. I do know who's in the top five, though, and that's where I would hope the Jazz go. We'll see. But um, I guess that's all I got. Did you have anything else you wanted to add, Calvin? No, I just think that it's uh, worst-case scenario draft-wise that Jazz get three first-round picks that aren't – you know, great picks, but there's still three first round picks in a loaded draft. So worst case scenario is still pretty dang good as far as draft picks go. Oh yeah. And they'll, you know, when you have three, they're going to hit on somebody, you know, I think one of the things that's been a little disappointing this season is that we just haven't really seen a this season and it would have been nice to see him play. And it doesn't mean he's a bust. It doesn't mean anything. It just means we haven't seen him. And there is enough talent on this jazz team. We've learned that it's hard to break the rotation. You know, if you're playing a you're playing him over Malik Beasley. Well, Malik Beasley is really, really good. And, you know, he's a sure thing where a not quite a sure thing yet. And so that might be more of a project. The disappointing thing with a is he's older too. So I don't know. I guess that's a topic for another day, but like you said, it's three picks in a loaded draft the Jazz are likely going to hit on at least one of those players. That's the other thing. The draft is about just taking swings. And if you hit with one, then it's, then, you know, that's big time. And so, all right, well, I don't have anything else, Calvin, unless you do. Um, uh, if you guys, if you're, if you're new here, make sure that you, uh, on Apple podcasts, I, I went to, I went to Spotify. It doesn't look like there's any sort of review there which might be good because some of the reviews on Apple, <laughs> let's say they hurt my feelings. Okay. A couple times, but that's okay. But anyways, uh, if you would leave a nice review for us on Apple podcast, that'd be great. Or just subscribe to the podcast. So, you know, when we go live, that'd be awesome. Um, and that's all I got. Hey, thank you, Calvin. Yep.